Uh, so, uh, a show of hands, how many of you in your childhood believed in the boogeyman? Just raise your hand right now. All right, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Raise your hand if you ever believed in the tooth fairy, not the drink. All right, we got a little more that time. All right. Now, raise your hand if you ever believed in Santa Claus. Still do. All right. Well, I never did. You see, my parents immigrated from Latin America in the 70s to Chicago, which, uh, which meant that we were poor as hell. The song In the Ghetto was about me, okay? And I'm not even talking about like the kind of poor where we just added some water to milk to make more milk. No, no, no. We added water to everything. We added water to soap, like hand soap, to make more soap. We added water to ketchup to make more ketchup, and that's gross, okay? <laughs> My dad didn't believe in buying electronics at Best Buy. He believed in buying them at Good Buy. No, they weren't the best, they were good. And I'm pretty sure it was the back of a truck, okay? And my parents also didn't believe in babysitters because we had 43 and a half cousins to deal with that, right? And my parents, they both worked a lot. My dad works two jobs, still does. Mom was full-time as well. She was also a mother. That meant she was a chef, an accountant, uh, a tutor, a chauffeur. And every once in a while, our 43 and a half cousins would also have jobs. So she needed a babysitter, and she needed to do things. So she went an easy and cheap route, which was to sit me in front of the television, which bought her like four hours of free time for me, because I would just tune in for those four hours, uh, just undivided attention, right? And when you're raised by television in this manner, uh, you learn a few things. For example, uh, that the birds and the bees aren't actually about birds and bees. That uh, groups of friends will on a daily basis meet at their favorite coffee shop or bar without any kind of prior planning whatsoever. Okay? And that, uh, that just Santa was just, had its doubts that it may not have been real. Because there was always that trope where a child, usually played by Gary Coleman, would have this existential crisis about Santa Claus and the TV family would try to reaffirm that belief and usually it was resolved because they encountered some magical homeless white man, right? <laughs> Which taught me that for a long time that every homeless white man I ever encountered was magical somehow, you know? And that's scary, right, for a brown kid in the south side of Chicago, all right? <laughs> and so one day my mom comes up to me and she has this grin from like cheek to cheek. And she looks at me and is like, guess what we are going to do today? We're going to go see the Santa Claus. <laughs> and my, my first reaction was, but Hawaii Five-0 is on, starring Jack Lord, James MacArthur, and Jane Frank John. And, but I couldn't tell her that. I couldn't tell her that. And I couldn't tell her that I knew about the shadow conspiracy that was Santa Claus. So I went. I went with her. We did, we did this whole thing. And she took me to the worst mall on the south side of the city, Ford City Mall, where they sold nothing but bootlegs and churros. <laughs> and then there was a line. All right? On top of everything, there was a line. And in this line, there was a bunch of kids acting up. And there was just parents, you know, moms mostly, telling them, it's like, you keep acting up. Santa ain't going to bring you anything. And I thought that was funny because I knew the validity of that statement because I knew that there was a reason why mom and Santa Claus had the same wrapping paper every year, all right? So I made sure not to piss off Santa Claus, right? And so we finally get to the front of the line. Now, if you think your average suburban, like, mall Santa is a manic, depressive alcoholic, imagine how bad it is in the hood, all right? We get up there, and this dude's an Eastern European guy who smells like cigarettes, alcohol, B.O., kielbasa, and shame. <laughs> and he opens his mouth, and it's ten times worse. <laughs> Little boy, come sit on lap. <laughs> Tell Santa what you want. Uh, begrudgingly, I tell him, I want a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle half-shell battle van. He looked at me like he didn't know what I was talking about, probably because he didn't know what I was talking about. And we both feign a smile for the picture that we have to take together. 
And afterward, my mom and I go do the only thing that's worth doing in this mall, and we get a churro. <laughs> and we're sitting there very happily, you know, eating away, and she asked me, so, what did you tell the Santa Claus? <laughs> and I told her, I asked him for a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle half-shell battle van. And I said it again for her, so, just so she got the memo. <laughs> a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle half-shell battle van. And she said to me, well, we will see. Which is mom speak for hell no. <laughs> right? And, so, and, you know, and then Christmas came along and you know, I didn't get what I asked for. And I wasn't too disappointed because I knew asking for a popular tour while we were that poor was just shooting for the moon. But I did land near the stars. I got a couple of action figures and I thought to myself, when I get my own money, I will buy it. <laughs> okay? I have yet to. Um, and, uh, you know, and my mom and I never talked about the fact that Santa isn't real. And I'm kind of glad that we never did have that conversation. Because when I think about it, I like thinking about that day where mom is smiling, where mom and I are hanging out together. When she's smiling, when there really isn't that much to smile about at the time. Thank you very much. <laughs>